So for any procedure, let it be scaling, root planing or root debridement for that matter, you require instruments. So let's discuss in detail about the periodontal instruments and starting off with the parts of the dental instrument. Now broadly dental instrument consists of three main parts. It consists of a handle. So handle is that part where one could hold it or grasp the instrument and then we have the working end. So this is the part of the instrument which comes in contact with the tooth surface and between the working end and the handle we have a portion called as the shank. So this basically uh, will connect the handle to the working end and based upon different instruments shank can either be short, it can be extended or it can be curved or it can be straight. Now talking about the working end of the instrument this is very important. So the working end again depends on the type of instrument. So here we have a scalar and here we have a curet. So the working end again is divided into three parts. So you have the heel. So this portion will be our heel. Then you have the middle portion of the working end and ultimately you have the end portion. Now based upon what type of end it is. So for example in scalar as you can see it's a pointed end. So here it is called as a tip. Whereas in case of curet, the end is rounded off, so it's called as a toe. So the end of the instrument, working end, can either end as a tip or a toe. Now talking about the surfaces which are involved with the working end, again it has number of surfaces. So this particular surface which is light blue in color is called as the face. And this particular surface which is highlighted here is called as the lateral surface. And just beneath the face we have another surface which is called as the back surface. And then we have cutting edges. So as you can see this highlighted red areas. So these are the cutting edges. So these are the edges which are placed onto the tooth surface and which are used to cut, uh, to scale and root plane that particular area. So remember the surfaces, we have a face surface, we have a back surface, we have lateral surfaces and we have two cutting edges. So again, these are uh, sickle scalers and here as you can see, this is the face. This is a curved sickle scaler and this is a straight sickle scaler and here the face is little narrow and here the face surface is quite broad and again both of them have ended in a sharp point called as a tip. So as you can see uh, in the curved sickle the working end is curved whereas in the straight one it is quite straight and mainly the sickle scalers or any scalers for that matter are used to remove the supra gingival plaque. So as you can see uh, it helps to remove or eliminate the supra gingival plaque which is present above the gingival margin. So sickle scalers have a flat surface with two cutting edges that converge sharply in a pointed tip. So it has two cutting edges. So these are the cutting edges. This is the first one and this would be the second one. It would sharply converge to form the tip. The scaler has a flat blade cut at a 90 degree angle to the shank. So if you see the shank to the face blade configuration, it is 90 degrees for both the curved as well as the straight sickle. Now the pointed toe, that is this particular portion and the first 1 to 2 mm of the lateral cutting edges perform the work in a short powerful pull stroke. So this particular area along with the first 1 to 2 mm is uh, placed onto the tooth surface and you use the short powerful stroke, pull stroke, remember this pull stroke to remove the calculus and the plaque. So we have spoken about scalars and we have seen that how the cutting edges will converge to form 
a tip that is a sharp end whereas in case of curettes the cutting edges will converge to form a rounded end and this is called as a toe and this is mainly uh, used to remove the subgingival calculus and used for subgingival scaling and root planing because uh, uh, this will not harm or lacerate the tissue in any manner so curettes are instrument of choice to remove deep subgingival calculus altered cementum for root planing and for removing soft tissue lining of the periodontal pocket now the curved blade and the rounded toe of the curet allows the blade to adapt better in the root surface area now again curettes can be of different types you have something called as the universal curettes and you have something called as the area specific curet the major difference between a universal and the area specific curet is the angle that is formed between the face and the shank so the face surface with the shank forms a angle of 90 degrees in case of a universal curet so this can be placed anywhere in the dentition at any site in the dentition and uh, it can be used whereas area specific means it is specific to a particular area inside the mouth so this forms a offset blade of about around 60 to 70 degrees so the face surface to the shank forms a offset uh, angle of about 60 to 70 degrees in area specific curet so let's have a look uh, in detail universal curettes are double ended instruments with two cutting edges on each working end and the shank has a bend these curettes have a cutting edges that may be inserted in most of the areas of the dentition by altering and adapting and hence it's called as universal so it can be used in most of the areas of the dentition coming on to the design features the face of the blade forms a 90 degree angle with the lower shank the cutting edges on both the sides of the blade are parallel to each other and the cutting edges will curve in one direction towards the toe of the instrument and this will tilt upwards in direction now the toe is the terminal portion and it is rounded in nature examples are the bernhard curettes number 1 2 and 5 6 and then we have the columbia curettes number 13 14 2r 2l and 4r 4l so these are examples of universal curettes now coming on to the area specific curettes now there are different types of area specific curettes and as stated before they are area specific so they can be only used in a particular site of the dentition so here we have the first category which are the gracie curettes so gracie curettes are representative of area specific curettes they are designed and angled to adapt to specific anatomic area of the dentition now these curettes and their modifications are probably the best instruments for subgingival scaling so as soon as we entered post graduation uh, in periodontics almost the first instruments that we were told to buy were the gracie curettes it is that important to have a set of gracie curettes as a periodontist so there are different types of uh, gracie curettes you have gracie 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 for anterior teeth then we have 5 and 6 for anterior teeth and premolars we have 7 8 9 10 for posterior teeth facial and lingual surfaces we have 11 and 12 for posterior teeth mesial aspect and 13 14 for posterior teeth distal aspect now these are the conventional gracie curettes which are available but now there are certain modifications also which are seen which is 15 16 and 17 18 So 1516 is a modification of 11 and 12 it is used uh, in the mesial aspect of posterior teeth and 1718 is a modification of 13 and 14 it is used in the distal aspect of posterior teeth so let's see what is the modification which is given so 1516 is a modification of standard 11 and 12 design uh, and it contains the gracie 11 and 12 blade combined with more acutely angled 13 and 14 shank so the blade is from 11 and 12 but the shank is from 13 and 14 so this new shank angulation allows better adaptation to posterior mesial surfaces uh, from the front position now coming on to gracie 17 and 18 this is a modification of 13 and 14 in which the terminal shank is elongated by 3 mm 
and the blade is shortened by 1 mm. Again, this adaptation allows better adaptation of the blade to the distal surfaces of the posterior teeth. Now, after Gracie curate, the next type of area specific curates are the extended shank or the after five curates. So, as stated, as the term suggests, it has extended shank, which is 3 mm more than the conventional Gracie curates. So, the terminal shank is 3 mm long, allowing extension into deeper periodontal pockets of 5 mm or more. Now, all standard Gracie numbers are present as after 5 curates as well except 9 and 10. Now coming on to the third type of area specific curates which is the mini 5 curates. So again mini 5 here also the uh, shank is extended by 3 mm and the modification here is the blade length is half that of the after 5 curate. So as you can see here the blade end. So this is a mini 5 and this is after 5 and this is our normal Gracie. So mini 5 and after 5 will have extended shank of 3 mm whereas in mini 5 the blade length is decreased or half as compared to the after 5. So this helps in the insertion of the mini 5 into deep narrow uh, pockets and furcation areas and developmental groove regions.